everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and I am excited today to be kicking off a Rolling Solo showcase here on the channel for Night of the Living Dead. This is a Zombicide game as you can see in the bottom right hand corner of this box. This comes from Cool Mini or Not. In the past on the channel I've covered Zombicide Green Horde. We went through a huge playthrough on the channel and it was a lot of fun. So when I saw this more streamlined version of Zombicide coming down the pipes through Kickstarter and then going to retail, got really, really excited to finally see a Zombicide system that is housed in a single box. That is something we have never seen before. There's typically just ridiculous amounts of content for most Zombicide games, taking a simple rule set and really beloating a lot of extra content into the fray that you have to manage for setup, teardown, and additional rules for abominations. Whereas this particular entry streamlines all of that, adds a whole bunch of new mechanics, ties itself to an IP that a lot of people are familiar with, and houses it all in a single box. So I'm really, really excited to see how this goes. The first thing we need to do as part of setup, and there's 11 steps, is to choose a scene. The game, of course, being tied to the movie, Night of the Living Dead, will follow that and also allow some freedom and creativity in terms of how the story progresses as the scenes go on. You are allowed to pick any scene you want, for me in this playthrough coming up, I'm gonna go with scene number one. So we've already completed step one of setup. Let's move into the final 10 steps together. And then if you'll join me, we'll dive into a full playthrough. The second step of setup is to go ahead and place all the tiles necessary to play the scene you've selected. You can see here we selected scene number one. It's called What's Happening. It's rated as easy. 45 minutes to play. The tiles are visually depicted right here, and you can even see, for easier reference, the number and letter that corresponds to the tiles you need to grab. In this case, it's 1R, 2R, 3R, and 4R. Just like that, step number two is complete. Step number three is about us placing the spawn zones, tokens, and miniatures as indicated by the scene in scene number one of the rule book that we just saw moments ago. And just like that, for step number three, all tokens are placed where they're depicted for scene number one. We'll talk about all the tokens, how to interact with different areas inside the house and around the house as we move into the playthrough. Finally, as depicted by the scene, ensure that the Winchester 94 is on tile 3R inside the building. Step number four is all about selecting our six survivors. As part of step number four, which is all about selecting your survivors, it's worth noting I'm playing solo, so I'll be controlling all six survivors, and there are only six inside the core box, so it's quite easy to grab those six, grab the dashboards, and this is where step number four moves into step number five. Place them with the Romero side facing up. If you flip these player character dashboards over, you'll find the Zombicide version on the back side. The survivors will always start in Romero mode unless the special rules or instructions for a specific scene state that you need to be on Zombicide mode from the start. Next, you're gonna to wanna to grab all the grayscale miniatures for all the Romero modes of each of the heroes. I've placed them all next to their dashboards and then go ahead and select one of the six colors and place one of the discs connected to the bottom of the miniature. You'll also have an additional one of each of the colors. Next, then you're gonna to wanna to find the zombicide mode of your particular survivor. If you're looking to match which miniatures go with which character, simply flip over your ID card and you can match the poses to the miniatures in the box. As an example of how the miniatures match the Zombicide mode of the character ID cards, I flip these three over so you can actually see their poses, and you'll notice that the three new miniatures I've added in, along with the associated color bases, also match the poses. Next, go ahead and find the eight pegs that correspond to the color you chose on the bottom of your miniatures, and slot six of them into the top right-hand corner of the character dashboard. The other one can go at the very top space next to the blue XP level, and this one over here here goes on the wound track in the zero position. Step number six is to set the following equipment cards in separate decks. They're categorized by color. I've got them all at the very top here. In gray, that is the starting equipment. Green is ranged equipment. Melee equipment in red house equipment in brown, special equipment in blue, and I've also placed the car reference card just there as a quick reference. However, for scenario or scene number one, you're not gonna be using a car, so you could put this one back in the box. 
And of course, you're going to need dice to play Zombicide, so make sure those are within easy reach as well. For step number seven, it's all about the starting equipment. So you're going to be starting with all the cards except for one table leg. Then you're going to distribute them randomly among the survivors, and each survivor will start the game with at least one card. The survivor receiving the Winchester 94 also gets the table leg card that was set aside. It's worth noting, though, that the Winchester 94 was placed down inside the house at the start of the scene, so we have some special rules around this one for this particular game. So in this case we already have six cards excluding the Winchester 94 which is inside the house so we simply go ahead and randomly place one of these starting equipment items on each of the survivors. Tom ended up with the crowbar, Helen ended up with a table leg, Judy ended up getting the tire iron, Barbara got the table leg, Ben got a claw hammer, and last but not least Harry got a table leg. Step number eight is largely dealt with as in step Step number six, I already shuffled and categorized the decks up top. The only deck not placed currently was the Ghoul deck. You'll go ahead, take this deck and shuffle it. Ensure this one's within easy reach as you'll be drawing from it very, very often. The ghoul deck has been shuffled and placed within easy reach. Step number nine is simply placing the miniature that matches the mode your survivors are currently in into their starting zones as indicated by the scene. You can see here I've moved out of the way all miniatures in zombicide mode as we start in Romero mode. In the special rules of scene number one, you'll note there are two starting zones for the survivors. The first one is right here and the second one is here. The special rules for setup in this particular scene state that Ben and Barbara are going to be in starting area number one right here outside the front door, and the other four are all going to be starting in area number two. Step number 10 is all about actually populating the dashboard with the pegs we did earlier and ensuring that your XP is set to zero to begin. We've covered all this already. We'll move to step number 11, the final step. The player that has the Winchester. 94 is the starting player so we give them the first player token however in this particular setup you can see as I mentioned earlier the Winchester 94 is in the house so there'll be special rules around this one checking scene number one there are no special instructions in terms of the first player so it's up to the players to decide who gets that first player token I'm gonna choose Tom just like that, Tom is going to be our very first player, but again, for the purposes of solo play, the first player token really doesn't matter as much because of the fact that I'll be controlling all six of these characters and can activate them in any order that I choose. So for the purposes of this playthrough, I'll actually be removing this token. And that's going to wrap up the setup for Night of the Living Dead from Cool Mini or Not. Hopefully you'll join me as we dive into scene number one. We'll talk more about the narrative text of this particular scene, the win and loss conditions, as well as some of the tokens here on the board, and all the special rules that this scene has for us in that upcoming video. Thanks again for watching, and as always, keep on rolling solo!